Chris, you have recently written in the National Post a column about why the anti-vaccine and anti-public health sentiment isn't somehow inherently Christian. And it's interesting to me that some of the vocal opposition to public health measures uh, does come from, in part at least, a certain segment of Christian groups. So can you explain the argument you made in the National Post? Uh, because I, I mean, I certainly agree there's nothing inherent in the faith that, that should be pushing it uh, for an anti-vaccine sentiment. But what do you mean by that? Thanks, Christine. And, and I think I'd just say at the outset that Certainly, there is a vocal minority within um, the Christian community that is opposed to the vaccines, but they are that. They are a minority, not just among um, uh, conservative Christians, though, or, or all Christians, rather, but even amongst conservative, uh, theologically conservative Christians. This is a relatively small uh, but very vocal group. Essentially, the argument that I made with, in this editorial with my colleague, uh, Brian Bird, who's a law professor at the University of British Columbia, is that uh, there's nothing inherent, as you say, in the Christian faith that would require a Christian to forego vaccination. And uh, the Christian faith has a lot to say about uh, conscience. And I myself, in addition to being a lawyer and aspiring legal scholar, am a Christian. Uh, conscience is important. Uh, Professor Bird and I would never want someone to be forced to get vaccinated against their conscience. But the issue here is that the Christian faith itself is, more, for the most part, silent on these sorts of issues. And whether or not specifically someone should get or not get the vaccine, uh, Christians are free to choose either of those. So to suggest that there's something inherently Christian about opposing it is in that sense incorrect, because many Christians, in fact, I would hazard that most have in fact gotten the vaccine. So, so just briefly, Chris, if it's not inherent, where is it coming from within these communities? Well, certainly our convictions and our beliefs are um, come from a lot of different sources. And in a lot of ways, they are um, all of our beliefs in, in one sense or another are religious. And we adhere to those beliefs with a religious fervor. But in this case, you see some of these beliefs that are um, these individuals would have beliefs that come from the Christian faith. And then they have these other beliefs that have come from somewhere else. It may come from a, a political ideology. It may come uh, as we've discussed already, from uh, misinformation, from fears for their safety. And I do want to be sympathetic to people who are scared and the vaccine hesitant out there. We need to meet them with grace and we need to counteract misinformation with information because we care about what is, uh, what is true. But in this case, we're seeing a, a complex uh, mix of, of different convictions and belief, a little bit here and a little bit there. Beautifully put, Chris. Um, now, Mark, I want to turn to you about the future of freedom of expression in this country. I mean, this, this case certainly makes me concerned about freedom of expression. A recent decision from the Supreme Court on uh, free expression and comedy was 5-4 uh, with, with four justices who, who would have really um, changed what freedom of expression means in this country. What do you think the trend is on this particular charter right? Well, I, to be honest, Christine, I think uh, freedom of expression is, uh, it ebbs and flows. Uh, th there have always been uh, attacks on freedom of expression. I think the, the challenge of the modern day is not that the attacks or the criticisms of free expression are greater. It's just that there are new challenges. Uh, social media has really democratized expression. And so it's given lots of opportunities for people to say certain things and to have things said back at them. And some people uh, don't like that cut and thrust. But in general, I would say at the, at the legal level, the Ward decision that you mentioned, the comedy decision, uh, it, was a, it was a split decision, but it was, it was, it was uh, very clear that freedom of expression in this country um, is important and that there is no right to be outraged. Uh, there's no concomitant right of outrage on the on the part of those who might not like certain forms of expression. So in general, I would say, uh, you know, that decision is very important. Mm -hmm.